For today's video, I'll discuss my first Supercoach team with the new rules that have come out. So it's currently, uh, it'll be January 26th when this video comes out. So new rules have been added. Mid-season DPPs are probably probably the main one as well as the new trade. So it's interesting to see how people play that. Um, hopefully we'll see you know other podcasts and ideas on Twitter and whatnot, even in our Discord. Uh, people coming up with ideas on how they want to play it, but yeah, it will be interesting and it'll be we'll learn a lot this year for next year if the rules are the same. So yeah, looking forward to that. Feel free to join our Discord. I think we've got nearly fifteen hundred super coaches that have joined so far. It's getting more and more active and you can post your team in our Discord and you can make a thread about it and people will comment on your team specifically. So uh, people have been doing that. I think we've got about 15, 20 of those open at the moment. So feel free to do that. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll discuss my team. So you've yeah, been playing around with it a bit today. And uh, we'll start in the defense. So you can see the midfield already, but we'll start in the defense. Um, well, first of all, $6,000 in, uh, in the bank account. Not a whole lot. Um, and also have a 102 rookie here and also have a 102 rookie in the forward line. I'll get to that in a moment, but... Um, yeah, that, that can be fixed, hopefully. But we'll see what happens with the rookies. We're still sort, sort of guessing at this stage. But in defense, Jake Lloyd, D1. I don't think you have to pick Jake Lloyd, to be honest. I think the main thing with Lloyd is they're playing a bit more attacking out of the back half. And Lloyd is just getting less handball received. So that's what I saw last year anyway. So he also had patches away. He wouldn't touch the ball for long periods. So... Look, fine, solid pick. I think he's top three defender still, but is pretty expensive, and I don't think it's going to hurt you if you don't start him. Sure, Dawson out uh, of City might help a little bit, um, but the numbers show that they didn't really change, but again, still not, not exactly sure. So I'm fully expecting Lloyd to average around the same, maybe a tad more, because what's interesting is his kickouts improved in the second half of the year, but his scoring was the same, so... I don't know. Maybe there's a little bit upside there, but not. Yeah, great, great starting pick. And if you want to fade him because you need money, uh, I'm not gonna get, not gonna argue against that. I think that's fine. But people, I said that in the Discord, and people just were saying just lock him in. But yeah, he's gonna be top six anyway, so it's no harm locking him now. Uh, Aaron Hall probably D1 for the year. Looks like he's playing that same role at training. Not much else to say. There's huge up, I guess huge upside here. He's 570k, but remember that was with a sub game and a concussion game. So by sub, I mean he started as a sub. So oh, he, he could easily sit low, low to mid 600s for the year. So very consistent player in that role. Slight durability risk, but that role is pretty free to play. Um, durability seems to improve at halfback. Um, but yeah, fan of the whole pick, and I think he's a lock, to be honest. Now... Jordan Dawson, I have a D3. So I've been saying this preseason. When I'm, when Supercoach first opened, I was like, I'm going to pick Dawson. Then I was like, oh, yeah, not sure on his role, new team. But it's this is the third time it's been mentioned, and I think Luke Brown mentioned it the other day, that it looks like he's going to get inside mid-time. And that was what I was waiting for. So it was mentioned by Nix. It was mentioned somewhere else, I can't remember. And then it was mentioned in a press conference. So... If he plays a bit inside mid, which is where he played as a junior, um, I, I think he'll score well there. Well, there's a debate. Well, do the Crows need another slowish inside mid? Um, well, we need good ball users inside mid, to be honest. So I'd love him to play there. We also need a tall player because we're the 180 centimeter brigade at, at the Crows. So I really hope he gets a bit of mid time. I'm expecting mostly wing, but maybe gets a bit of both so watching his highlights i think it's the contested marking and the kicking it's just phenomenal to watch when you watch it so i highly recommend go watch his highlights he's a star player and um yeah he, he done did sydney pretty dirty leaving i know he wanted to come home but man it was pretty tough for sydney to tough field to swallow to lose him he, he looks like a star to me so you gotta remember 114 average in that role at sydney Probably going to play the same role with maybe a bit more inside mid time at the Crows. So, look, we'll watch him over the preseason. I feel good about the pick. If it doesn't, if I get cold feet on it, the role doesn't look as good as I thought it was. Straight down to Ridley. That's, that's pretty much it. And then Whitfield. Again, last time Whitfield had a full preseason, he went absolutely berserk in the first few rounds. I think it was 120 average until I think he hurt his collarbone or something, something like that. 
Um, but yeah, cheap. He's got DPP, which will be nice early if required. Um, I suppose we'll get more DPP, so it won't matter too much. Dawson will get a DPP. So yeah, I like the pick. I like the upside, and I like the price. Sure, the durability risk, maybe with more trades, it sort of helps it a bit. But with these trades, I'd rather... I still don't really want to take much durability risk, but Whitfield is one that I'm willing to take. No soft tissues, three. So then the rookies, not not too sure on the rookies, to be honest. Um, I don't love the defender rookies. I think there's Kemp and Sin, I think, are a very strong chance to play early. Uh, they're 150k odd. Um, Perez looks like the successor to Hall. Done two ACLs. One ACL wasn't his sort of his fault. They, st- I think they, from what I read, they stuffed up his surgery. Um, well, didn't hold it down. Something, something like that. It, um, I, I can't remember exactly, but looks good in the preseason so far. Apparently, good kick. Um, I think they need they need to blood games into young halfbacks because they can't have Hall and Z will playing the whole year. Um, yeah, they they need a blood youth in that position. So, um, yeah, I, I like Perez so far. Has no scoring history in the VFL because of his injuries. So, look, full preseason, 140K. I think he'll have a good role. Keep an eye on him. He's the one I like out of Kemp and Sin at the moment. But uh, they're very much... It's it's gen, um, sorry, it's January, so we'll see how it goes. O'Driscoll's playing wing. I think he is competing with Collier for a spot. Could be, could be wrong there, but that's from what I've read. So... Apparently, he's hired a personal trainer over the preseason. Impressing so far. Injury-free. Um, oh yeah, I think they'd want a blood youth in that position. So, fingers crossed he plays. Was a second-round pick. So, um, fingers crossed. I think he'll be in a reasonable, maybe a 65 on-field option. But we'll see how it goes. Year in the system. DPP as well is kind of nice. DeConning, probably... I think Jenkins called him a lock to play. Ain't going to score much, but... Might take some intercepts and might get a few hit outs. So maybe he can slow crawl to 250 or something. So yeah, not ideal, but not really sure who else at the moment. And then Charlie Dean, mature Ajo who can intercept at Collingwood. I don't know if they want to play him key position or third toll because they got Howe, Roughhead and Darcy Moore. So having said that, I don't know if there's a spot for him, but... Uh, who knows? Fingers crossed. But yeah, I think he's capable, reasonable scorer. Not amazing, but um, yeah. See his role. See if he gets named. If not, we'll have to figure something out. Probably need to go talk down to Walsh and free up some cash for Sin or something like that. But we'll see. Now in the midfield, um, I won't scroll down just yet. Um, Jack McRae. His fixture, especially with COVID outs, um, he plays so many early games in the first eight or nine weeks, and he barely, I don't think he leaves Victoria once for, maybe once in the first eight or nine weeks. So it's a free pick for me. It's McRae, it's the king. One thing that does annoy me is Beveridge took him out of the middle in the grand final, played him full mid the whole entire year, and then bang, 50% CBAs in the grand final. Maybe you're wondering, why didn't McRae have as big as impact as what? He's had in the regular season. Well, took him out in the middle. Player still won the finals MVP or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, fingers crossed Bevo doesn't do that again. So that has me slightly worried, but why would you do that? Worked the entire year, so it is what it is. But, yeah, I think he's our vice captain for the early part of the year. So a very important cog in the team. And then Jack Steele. I have Jack Steele as M1. If you watch the channel, you know how I feel about Jack Steele. Star player, star leader, star... Everything about him is unreal. So, tackles, so many scoring avenues, all that. You already know. So, Steele was a lock, easy. And already good time trial result, again. Um, already impressing. I think he was a standout at training, which is a complete shock. So, yes. And then the next player I have. So, this is very much a flexible spot, I think. It could end up a, a forward I don't know if I want to run five defenders, but um, it just depends on how it goes. It could go all the way down to a rookie to help the forward line out. We'll see. Uh, Took Miller. So basically, it, with Greenwood out, who probably... Now, Took Miller's getting those tackles instead of Greenwood, maybe. His average was almost 130. So for that reason, very low floor. I'm um, sorry, high floor, rather, and uh, reasonable ceiling. So 
no, no real boom games like 170 plus scores, but you know, consistent 120s to 140s most weeks. So yeah, very happy to have him. And look, he's very expensive, but I think he's worth it. Josh Dunkley said that he is the hardest matchup in the AFL as a midfielder. So, and he's not even that big. He's pretty short midfielder as well. So, but he gives it a massive crack every game. Plays so hard. So, fan of Took Miller. I guess it took. It's actually Took. Um, but yeah, Tom Mitchell having a good preseason, showing off his rig on Instagram. Pretty good rig to be honest. But look, the last time Mitchell had a full preseason, he won a brown low. The last time Neil had a full preseason, he won a brown low. So I'm locking these two in. Neil with a full preseason. Sounds like he's really determined. I'm still a little bit worried about all the injuries he had, but I think it's everyone, everyone's going to pick him anyway. And if it goes wrong, we'll go down together. So look, I'm reasonably confident in Neil. I had my doubts early, but I've come around to it now. So yeah, Mitchell and Neil and Steele and McRae are absolutely locked in for me. And then Miller's a flex one. M6 is one Finn McRae. Now, the Collingwood set up, I read a lot of the Collingwood reports and apparently Dugowie is playing forward for the second time. So I actually took Finn McRae out when I when Dugowie was uh, freed with his uh, expensive lawyers. But um, because I just figured, well, they've got Lipinski, Adams, and who's the other one? Crisp. Somebody else, I can't remember. So I was thinking, well, are they going to give much time to Finn? But it sounds like he's getting a bit of time. He's getting a bit more time over Reef at the moment, which is good. Reef played forward last time I heard. So, look, I'm a fan of Finn. I know he didn't really... He had a quarter last year where he got 12 touches in his second game uh, after being shoved at half forward for the entire entirety of the game, of that game. So, yeah, until the fourth. So, look, I'm a fan of Finn. He's. It looks like he's improved in all areas of his game, well, specifically endurance, um, just body size in general. So and impressing. So look, I'm a fan of Finn McRae pick. We'll see how he goes with Horn Francis. You know, perfect job security, and we'll end up a forward. You would think by round six, maybe Horn Francis is the smarter pick. But Finn's got an extra year in the system. Probably has a better role as well. We'll keep an eye on it. So yeah, big fan of Finn. Nick Dacos is free, so just pick him. I don't really want to speak much else on him, but yeah, he accumulates like no tomorrow. Greg Clark's having a good preseason from what I've heard. I think he had a minor injury, but uh, he'd been playing well at training in match sims from what I've read. I want him on the field, and that's that. Reef McInnes, I think Nick Maxwell was saying he wants to pump games into Finn and Reef, so I assume he plays early. Uh, might not score the best if he's shoved forward, but I, th- I figure they probably want to give him some mid-time. And Cooper Stevens, I don't know where he's at. I haven't heard anything on him, except for I think Joel Selwood said a few weeks ago he's been impressing at training. That's all I've heard. Had so many injuries, I think. So, look, I think he's one where you can put him on the field if he plays, but um, I guess you need to fill these bench spots somehow. Then Matt Roberts, impressing as well at training. Not sure where he's at exactly in terms of where he's in the team. Are they going to play him forward, give him a bit of mid-time? Not too sure. And then Darcy Grundy. Uh, Sean Darcy, probably a lock for me. Ceiling's too damn high. Grundy's having a really good preseason apparently. but So he, he was doing the same last preseason and uh, kind of just tailed off at the end of the year, but maybe he's a bit rejuvenated. Who knows? A lot of Collingwood players here, but... Um, we'll see how that goes so as I mentioned I did uh, I reviewed Max Gorn in my Melbourne preview and it looks like Max Gorn's ceiling is probably about 115 at the moment so Grundy and Darcy should probably beat that so for that reason they are my two that are in I don't mind Oscar McInerney but DR doesn't seem keen on him and I he's got a pretty good judgment on Brisbane so uh, yeah that doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence so for that reason um Darcy Grundy, be done with it, set and forget. Now we'll go to the forward line. So look at this, what a mess. Um, but the whole idea is this forward line, just just take the field, give me 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, just score something. 
Um, don't get dropped. I think most of these, we'll discuss them in a second, but um, yeah, look, it's about waiting until we figure out who the top forwards are when they all get eligible in round six, maybe round 12 as well, but generally most of them that are relevant come in round six. So we'll we'll, we'll watch that. You know, you never know. Some of these Ruckman might spend time early for, like what if they want to manage Gorn up forward early in the season? I've Oscar McInerney I spoke about just in the video, the last video I did um, with Hipwood out for a while. Rowan Marshall will probably be, he'll probably be borderline again. So, so many options. And then like Leon Cameron, what if he, I suppose they're all bloody forwards anyway at the moment, but what, what if he does something stupid like put, you know, what if Tom Green gets forward eligible and he breaks out? I guess it's probably a bit more of a stretch, but um, nonetheless, it's still something to consider. Um, actually, there's probably better options than Tom Green, I guess, but uh, that are 450k at the moment. But yeah, that's for another day. So number F1 is Josh Dunkley. Saw him at a uh, picture of him at training, and that was enough for me. Lock him in. Only had six percent CBAs in the final, which is pretty stupid, but um, is what it is. I, I still think he he only needs about 20. Give him 20 percent CBAs, he'll average 100. Give him 40 percent go 120 plus like he did last time or 50 percent whatever it was Canelio having a good preseason a bit more confident everyone's going to pick him lock him in and i don't think he's a keeper um he was really bad in 2021 but we'll see how that goes now willie rioli i did some research on this pick there's two hype articles in the western australian on him saying one says he's going to get a bit more uh, he's going to pinch it in the midfield and I think the other one says he's improving, he's impressing with his fitness or something. So two, 230K or 225K might be an okay pick. Like I'm not expecting major things. The role is not going to be super great, but look, I think they want to, they want him up the ground a bit more, it sounds like. So see how he goes in the preseason. I just want him to make 120K. I know that's, I guess you want 150, but I don't really want to lock myself into forwards at the moment and then Charlie Curnow pressing in the preseason he's got 150s in him he's shown it before I don't know if he's still managing his knee at all we'll see how he goes in the preseason but having a good preseason so far and wait for the boom game and then sell him so see how that goes I don't know if Finn McGuinness plays because I think they're going to play sounds like they're going to play Connor Nash plus they got Newcomb Newcomb rather so, yeah, uh, impressing in the preseason nonetheless. And I think Scrimshaw said he was one of the standouts. So, fingers crossed we get Finn McGuinness, another Finn. So, see how that goes. And Hollands, I think they'd be pretty stupid not to blood games into Hollands. Not not sure where he's at in terms of um, his development over the preseason. Haven't really heard anything, but huge talent. And second year now, although had the ACL last year. Had a bit of time to play VFL late last year, so... Fingers crossed they blood games into him. Get, gets maybe a little bit of mid-time, but yeah, he'll be a star, without a doubt. And then Sam Skinner, I don't really know if he plays or not. I think Port need height back there, and he can intercept and score. So yeah, they, they got mega exposed in the prelim, so see how that goes. And then Charlie Parker. Well, this spot, I've got Parker here because he's a mature ager, but they also picked up another one, McComb, I think. VFL star in from their team. So I think this 102 is going to be Jack Hayes from St. Kilda, who just signed today with them, I believe. So with Hayes, his numbers are in the SNFL are pretty crazy. There's a lot of 130 plus scores in there. So I think he can play anywhere on the ground, but played forward, I think. I have done, probably need to look into it a bit more, but yeah, won the, I think won the Norm Smith for... I think he won the Norm Smith for SNFL. But anyway, that's enough rambling on. I think um, that's a team. 12 keepers, probably not enough, but I do have the five big mids and we have the more tr we have more trades. So we'll see how that goes. And yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys soon.